Imagine just giving three text instructions to a computer, and if you say, make it look like a cyborg, you can go from this to this. And you no longer have to imagine, this is instruct pix to pix. That AI algorithm is completely mind-blowing, and I will tell you what I find the most mind-blowing in a few seconds. So let's get started. Today's digital life hack is Instac Pix to Pix. It's a super cool AI model that is able to modify uh, images basically with simple free text English prompts. The part I find the most mind blowing is how that model was trained. However, if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I cannot just take a digital life hack and start using it. No, I have to understand exactly how it works and then explain it to you. So how does Instac Pix to Pix works and how was it trained? Well, in this particular case, boy, was I impressed when I looked under the hood. But that said, if you don't care how it was actually uh, built, just skip to the next chapter to learn how to run it, how to use it, and all kind of funny and interesting prompts that you can use with it. The first thing you notice when you look at the research paper is that it was actually uh, trained by two people in a small lab, basically with no resources. Most machine learning models are trained by thousands of people and it costs thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. This one was made by just two people. Now, how is that possible? Well, in a way, it's a, a new generation of algorithms, of uh, generative AI algorithms that are trained by generative AI algorithms. That's pretty crazy, but that's exactly how it works. So Tim Books and Alexander Helansky trained the model first on the Lion dataset, basically the same dataset that Stable Diffusion was trained on. Then they basically used Stable Diffusion to uh, generate two different prompts. They took a simple prompt, modified it, generated another prompt, and then manually wrote basically the instruction of how to change the picture. They've done it manually 700 times. So basically they generated 1400 images before and after and 700 modification instructions. Then they fed that into GPT-3. So with GPT-3, they fed the before prompt, the after prompt, and the instruction that modifies the prompts from one to another. And they asked GPT-3 to generate more prompts like that. And GPT-3 complied. So to that, they generated 450,000 different modification prompts, and then got Stable Diffusion to generate the before and the after pictures for all of those. At the end of this process, they had 900,000 images before and after. They took that and they trained the machine learning algorithm to go from the before to after once it gets the prompt. And that's it. Once they trained it on that data set, basically they had a, a training data of 900,000 images from the 700 they generated manually. The model was generic enough that once applied to new images, it worked. Even to images that they, like photos or generic images that they gave to the model which is completely mind-blowing. It just opens a new path to training machine learning models. All right, enough chit chat. You know, now that you know how it works, how can you use it? Well, lucky for you, I prepared a special uh, Collab notebook where you can just test it out and play with a model. What is Collab? Collab is a product by Google that allows people to train and play with machine learning uh, and AI models, essentially for free, as kind of the um, approach to popularizing and making uh, machine learning more accessible. If uh, you come from development background and you're familiar with uh, Jupyter Notebooks in Python, this is basically a Jupyter Notebook in the cloud that runs a virtual machine inside Google Cloud. Right, let's switch to the uh, computer and I'll show you how to launch Instruct Pix to Pix and how to play with a model yourself. When you click uh, in the link in the description below, you'll end up at that page. Once that starts, you press runtime run all. It will ask that it was not authored by Google. Well, yes, because it was authored by the authors of this paper and modified by me. Press on anyway. It will take it um, somewhere up to 30 seconds to launch it. We'll wait patiently. And in the end of it, you'll get a link that looks like that. You click on it and you have it in a new tab. It's important that you don't close the original uh, Collab tab because Collab runs only while the tab is open in order to preserve resources. And it's not designed as a kind of hosting platform. Once you have that loaded, you can press load example and it will load an image that I put into the system itself. 
and uh, we'll gen generate one of the sample instructions. So for example, that one puts him in the beach. Click it again and see what we come out. And here, what if it was snowing? All right, let's try a few more fun prompts. So let's say, make it a Picasso. What about turning it into anime? Or maybe something more serious, like a graphic novel. How about convert it to black and white? Hmm. Now we see one of the first examples of it basically failing. And let's look into the parameters to learn how we can control it. We have basically four parameters. One is steps, which controls the quality of the image. The higher the number, the higher the quality of the resulting image. Seed is uh, which random number to use. And if you don't know what is the seed, be sure to check my mid-journey tutorial where I go into depth of what the seed is and how to generate images with mid-journey with different seeds and how to create your own AI avatars with mid-journey. Check this video here. Then we have text CFG and image CFG. What those two parameters control is how much weight does the text or the prompt has and how much weight does the image have. So if I increase the image, we'll see that it takes more of the image into the generation. If we increase it, it will take more of the prompt and we'll see more examples of that later. For now, I'm just going to keep it at 1.5 and let's say one of my favorite as a steel from a Western. And here we have him <laughs> from a Western. Let's change the image a bit so it will be more creative. Let's make him as a biker. To be fair, Tada Pascal looks like a biker even with no changes. But what if we make him as a Terminator? All right, kind of looks like the Terminator. What if we take me and make me as a Teletubby? Okay, that went too far. Let's increase the image a little bit and see how that looks. Okay, decrease the CFG a little bit. And we got me as a, well, kind of pink Teletubby. What about making him as a goom or as a hippie? That's a nice looking hippie. Or as a statue. Ah, so beautiful statue. Now you will see that uh, because of the way that pix 2 pix has been uh, trained, it can easily modify the image itself, like the way that the image looks, but it cannot move or change anything in the form of the image. So if I say something like make him fat, that will work. Or what would it look like? Bold. What if it was snowing? So in all of those examples, the basic form of Richard still stays. But if I say zoom on his face, nothing changes. Move him to the left. And again, nothing changes. Let's try to change his clothes. Let's give him a coat, pretty cold, or a t-shirt, or a knitted sweater, or a leather jacket. Let's say make his hoodie black. Nice, but you see that it impacted the hair and the shirt as well. Comments with similar meaning can have a very different impact on the image because the model doesn't actually understand the commands. It just kind of trained on how the result of those commands looks like. So, for example, put a brick wall behind him versus make the background a wall. And you see it's a very different image. What about modifying a landscape? So here we have this image of a lake with some uh, mountains and clouds. And let's add boats on the lake. And we have a few small boats, but if we increase the text GFG, we can start seeing boats over here. And when we run it a few times, the boats appear in different places. And there we go with the boats over here. What if we want to add fireworks in the background? And there we have this same lake with the mountains and fireworks in the background. And notice how it changed the color of the water. That's kind of really impressive. All right, if you prefer to use instruct pix to pix in a, a more comfortable environment, you can do it in Playground AI. But keep in mind that Playground AI is a paid service, so after a while you'll have to pay for the usage. So we click on create, import image to edit, and here we can write the instruction the same way we can do it inside Google Collab. So turn him into a cyborg, and we got the result. Now, Instruct pix to pix is a relatively uh, limited model. I mean, it can do quite a lot, but only the things it's been trained on. If you want to generate any image you can imagine, you can use Mid Journey. 
and I made a video here that goes into detail of how to use Midjourney, or use Table Diffusion that uh, Instact Pix2Pix is based on, which is a very powerful, very, very um, flexible image generation platform. However, it's much more complicated to use than both Midjourney and Instact Pix2Pix. I hope this video was helpful. Instact Pix2Pix is a very powerful, very fun model to play with. However, it's still a little bit limited in what it can do. So I'm going to be showing a lot more digital life hacks and AI life hacks such as this in this channel. So be sure to subscribe. While this is a very fun and powerful algorithm, if you're already on the subject of algorithms, be sure to press like to tell the YouTube algorithms that this is a good video and more people should see it. And I would definitely appreciate that. And definitely subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of the other digital and AI life hacks that I'm showing on this channel. Until next time, bye bye.